right. <clears throat> okay, so let me share the slide. Right, so this should be uh, the new topic for today, which is the simple harmonic motion. Okay, so in the short form, we call that as SHM. SHM. Okay, simple harmonic motions. All right, so what is uh, the sub topic of the simple harmonic motions? So in this chapter, we will learn about periodic motion. Okay, so what is the relate? Uh, what is the periodic motion? The from the keywords of period. Right, and then we will learn about the simple harmonic motion itself and how can we connect okay, between the uniform circular motion, uh, the topic that we learned before you go to uh, mid-semester break, and with the simple harmonic motion, and also the period of mass on the spring, okay, the energy conservation, and lastly, the pendulum. Okay, so what is the pendulum? How is simple harmonic re uh, motion related to pendulums? Okay, so so what is periodic motion? Okay, periodic motion is a motion that repeats itself over and over again. Okay, so it repeats itself over and over again. So meaning that if you have uh, some repetitions motion, motion that repeats itself, that means that is a periodic motion. Okay, so when we talk about periodic motions, okay, we often see uh, such as uh, the clock, okay, uh, let's say the clock, the pendulum, uh, or the pendulum clock, I mean, uh, okay, the, the clock that we used to see uh, in the horror movie, for example, okay, at 12 o'clock, okay, it will, uh, uh, okay, the clock, uh, the pendulum will, okay, move from left to right, left to right, and that motion, is repeating itself over and over again. So, that is something related to periodic motion. Before this, we learn about uh, circular motions. Okay, but before that, we learn about motions. Motions, uh, circular motions, and then lastly, the periodic motions. Alright, so uh, when we talk about periodic motions, it comes from the word period. Okay, period means a uh, Tempo, uh, is what we call as a, uh, it's not a time, but in terms of time, okay, in terms of time, we can say that period is the time required, okay, time required for one cycle of periodic motions, one cycle of periodic motion, that means period is not time, okay, period is not a normal time, okay, if for example, uh, we have to count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 seconds. That is called time. Okay, but when you talk about period, we should know that uh, the period comes with the one complete oscillation. Okay, one complete oscillation. That is equivalent to one period. So what is one complete oscillation? For example, where we have some, let's say, if uh, before this I talk about pendulum. Okay. So let's say this is your pendulum. Okay, so let's, let's, say, let's say it will move from x equals to 0 until x equals to a. That means x equals to amplitude. Huh? x equals to amplitude. Okay, and the pendulum, okay, we bring the pendulum here at x equals to 0 and then uh, we release the pendulum and it will go from this point to the maximum point and then it goes back to the original positions. So that is considered to be one period. Okay, that means one complete oscillations. And how many times required? So that is equivalent to time. Okay, but time required for one complete of oscillation, oscillation is called period. Okay, so that's why when you try to do uh, simple harmonic um, simple harmonic motions, uh, experiments of the simple harmonic motions, so you should bring the pendulum at this point and then you release the pendulum and 
the moment uh, you, when you catch back the pendulum at the original position, that is considered to be one complete oscillation. If you want to finish the 10 complete oscillation, then you should know, okay, it's starting from this point, goes to this point, and then it goes back. So that is considered to be one complete oscillation. If you want to do a 10 complete oscillation, so you should do, try to repeat the motion eh, 10 times. Okay. Uh, so how about frequency? <coughs> okay, well, because when we talk about cycle, it's always related to <coughs> how many cycles can you do inside uh, a period of time. So if you look, if you took uh, careful, if you look carefully, uh, when we when we look when you use period, okay, we often use T. Okay, we use T. Eh? We use capital T. It's not a uh, small letter T. Normally, time we put it as Time is T, small letter T. But when you look at the period, we often use it as a cap, as a, small, a capital T. That means period. So that should differentiate between period and time. <clears throat> and this is the frequency. Okay. So the frequency is the number of oscillation per unit time. Number of oscillation. Okay. How many, uh, you should count, okay. Uh, how many uh, a cycle, how many cycles inside a certain amount of time, okay? It's a number of oscillation. So, when we took, when we look about the periodic, okay, it's not just a cycle, maybe we can also look into the oscillation, okay, oscillation, uh, right? Okay, the number of oscillation per unit time, so with the F frequency is equivalent to 1 over period. Okay. It's not time, but it's period, one over period. And of course, okay, uh, regardless of uh, the definitions of period and time, is differentiated by the its own definitions, but the unit okay, for time and period is still second. Okay. So one over the period is equivalent to frequency. Okay. In the frequency, we can say that the unit is second negative one, or also known as so that's why when we talk about when you look at the, uh, we often use frequency as hertz. For example, okay, the frequency of the uh, <clears throat> uh, the frequency of the radios, okay, maybe one zero three point three, okay, one zero three point three mega hertz. Okay, so that is considered to be the frequency of the radio, right? Uh, when you look, you look at the unit hertz, okay, and it's equivalent to one cycle per one second, okay, one cycle per one second, all right. <clears throat> now, uh, try to imagine this thing that we look, uh, the understanding of the relationship between period, frequency, and angular frequency, okay. So, um <clears throat> Let's say the problem is 1,300 kilogram car is constructed on a frame supported by four springs. Okay, each spring has a spring constant of uh, K, which is 20,000 Newton per meter. Okay, K. So this should be the K. If two people riding in the car have combined mass of 1,160 kilogram, find the frequency frequency of vibrations of the car when it's driven over a pothole in the road. Find also the period and the angular frequency. Okay, uh, the, the period and frequency is always related because T is uh, inversely proportional to F. Okay, because of that, F is equivalent to 1 over T. Okay, when F increase, then period will be decreasing, right? So this is the, the, the equation that we should, okay, always remember that as frequency is equivalent to 1 over period. Okay, the unit of frequency is Hertz. How about angular frequency? Because the question asks you about angular frequency. So what is angular frequency? Okay, normally when we talk about angular frequency, is the same as what we learn in the circular motions. Okay, in the circular motions, we have learned about some angular position. Okay, as so our angular 
velocity because angular frequency is actually omega okay, omega is equivalent to 2 pi f how come they get there okay it is this thing okay before this you learn omega as angular velocity but in here okay in this chapter is known as angular frequency because the omega is equivalent to 2 pi f how come we get the 2 pi f okay so actually omega is based on the 2 pi over t if you can remember omega is 2 pi over t that means uh, the period taken uh, in one complete oscillation because omega is angular frequency and 2 pi is the uh, one circular uh, uh, one um, uh, arc okay or should we call it as a 2 pi is the one complete cycle okay one complete cycle starting let's say from this point okay and if you uh, try to circle these things and reach at the same point so this is known as 2 pi 2 pi radian okay 2 pi radian so over a circle uh, over a certain amount of time is called angular velocity okay it's, it's also known as angular velocity so that's why 2 pi over period is equivalent to angular velocity but if we know uh, from this chapter 1 over f is equivalent to 1 over t so that's why when we're replacing 1 over t over here with the frequency then we can also state that omega is equivalent to 2 pi f okay so in a way we can say that angular velocity is also known as angular frequency okay angular velocity is equivalent to angular frequency due to what because we have right now used the frequency before this we didn't use frequency how come we can use the, the, uh, the frequency inside this chapter because this chapter is about periodic motion that means the motion that repeat itself over and over again so uh, before this in the angular velocity uh, the, the motion doesn't repeat okay so when you look at the angular velocity okay angular velocity uh, it doesn't show any repetitions before this but in this chapter uh, we can look at uh, the motion is actually repeating itself and that's why we can uh, note that the angular velocity is also equivalent to angular frequency okay all right <clears throat> so in this case okay they want to find the frequency and then they get uh, after they get the frequency we can find the period and after get the period we can get the angular frequency so normally the angular frequency is just a matter of 2 pi f 2 pi that means 2 pi times with the free frequency okay so so how to get the frequency first all right so um from the words uh the frequency okay before this we have learned that the 2 pi over t okay uh omega is equivalent to 2 pi over period Okay, so how can we get the period, right? Uh, this spring is connected to four springs, okay? The car is connected to, is supported by four springs, okay? And there are two people, so that means this is a total mass of 160 kilogram, okay, 160 kilogram, and plus with the uh, 1,300, 1,300, kilogram so we can say that the mass okay one is based on the here okay this is mass of the car and this is the mass of the passenger okay how can we get one of one fourth of uh, the total mass okay because of the spring uh, have uh, damp uh, damped the the mass to one fourth of its original mass okay so now we have 1300 kilogram plus with 160 kilogram so it should equivalent to 1300 plus with uh, 160 so the answer should be 04 
okay, 1460. And divide with 4, you can get 365 kilogram. That is the absolute mass for this part, okay. The absolute, to get the absolute mass, then we should divide with, with 4 because the mass is actually supported by four springs. Regardless of the situations of the spring, okay, but the spring have, you know, um, have divide, okay, the mass of the total mass of the uh, situations to become 365 kilogram. Okay, so from this part, okay, omega equals to 2 pi over t, we can actually uh, derive some equations, okay, which means uh, the, the period itself, okay, if you can, you can remember, t equivalent to 2 pi m over k, square root of m over k. Okay, 2 pi, this is t, yeah? remember this is t, so we can measure it and then we can get, but we, in this case, we want to find what is period, right? what is the frequency, okay, so period is itself equivalent to 1 over f. So if you want to get f, then f is equivalent to okay, 1 over 2 pi square root of everything will be square root of uh, k over m. And then from this part, you can get 1.18 hertz. Okay, 1.18 hertz. And then Okay, maybe if you want to, if you want to, if you want to to to, uh, to calculate the frequency first, you can also calculate the period first because when we get the period, you can also get the frequency, and then the angular of frequency will come later, right? So you can try on your own, right? Okay, so now we move to the simple harmonic motions, okay. So, uh, when we talk about periodic motion, that means the motion that repeat it, uh, repeating itself over and over again. Okay, but what is the simple harmonic motion? Okay, of course, uh, the simple harmonic motion is the subchapter of the, uh, from the big, which is uh, from, the, from this chapter, uh, subchapter of this chapter. That means it must relate to the periodic motions. Okay, so if we are concentrating about the figure here. Okay, look at the left figure. Okay, when you have some uh, air track, okay, this is air track. Eh? If you look carefully, when this air track is connected to a spring. Okay, this is a spring. Okay, and this is the glider. The glider. And this is air track. Uh, when you look at this side, okay, let's say the uh, matter is your eyes over here, okay, and you look at this uh, view, okay, you can say that the glider is actually like this, okay, this is the air track, okay, why air track is like this, okay, because the, uh, on the surface of the air track, it blows some, okay, it blows some air, okay, it blows some air, and the glider, uh, the glider and a track is made from steel. It's made from steel. So you can uh, imagine that uh, the glider and the, okay, uh, uh, that is steel, made from steel, and the air track is also made from steel, okay, um, it's actually very hard to, to move okay, on the surface of the air track because both have made from steel. But see, okay, but if you give some a very uh, controlled uh, amount of air okay very controlled amount of air that means okay at this hole okay you can see here a tiny hole okay so it blows some a very controlled uh, air okay, from the blower is connected. Let me. This one is connected to a blower. Okay. And what happens is next is the glider will be lifted up. Okay. Let's say this is the glider. Okay. On your on this one. Okay. This is the glider. Okay. So the okay, if I want to describe that. Okay. Then. Okay. The glider will be lifted up okay and then we'll make that no um, 
uh, resistance between the glider and the air track. Okay, so that is the functions of the air track. That means the track that contain a very high speed control air, okay, from the blower, okay, that it makes the glider, that means made from steel, uh, becomes no resistant with the air track. So the glider will move freely. Okay, the glider will move freely from this side to this side, will move freely when it's connected to some uh, uh, spring. Okay, so there is one type of periodic motion uh, that is particular uh, and important. It is referred to as simple harmonic motion. A spring exerts a rest restoring force, F equals to negative Kx, okay, due to what? Spring. Okay, so this is actually the Hooke's law. Okay, F force, K is the spring constant, where X is the elongation. That is proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium. Okay, can you imagine one thing? Let's say the glider, uh, after we uh, uh, switch on the blower, okay, the glider is easy, uh, is easily can move okay, on the surface of the air track, right? So we try to bring it at one side, okay? And at least we pull the glider, okay? We pull the glider from its original position. Where is our original position? X equals to zero here, okay? So this is the original, uh, original positions of the glider, okay, at first. And then we pull to one side, and when we pull to this side, we tarik there. At least sampai x equals to a, at least x equals to amplitude, and then we release that. Okay, we release the glider, and of course, after we release the glider, it will goes from one point to one point, and let's say from this at first x equals to a, and then it goes back to the original x equals to zero, and does it stop there? No, because the glider will still move. Uh, from uh, x equals to 0 to x equals to negative a here. And then, does it stop there? No, because of the restoring force. What is the restoring force? Uh, the force that always opposing the original position, uh, the, ori the, the original force. Okay, If we try to uh, 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 give force to the left, okay, the restoring force will make that the force will try to move to the right. Okay, it's always opposed what we apply the force, okay? So, and then uh, at x equals to negative a, does it stop there? No, it goes back to x equals to 0, and then finally it goes back to x equals to a, okay? So, it starts from x equals to a at the amplitude, and then it goes to 0, goes to negative a. After negative a, does it stop there? It goes back to 0, and then it goes back to x right? equals to a. That means... When the um, the original one, which is the, at the position of x equals to a, uh, the glider comes back to the position of x equals to a, that means it has already applied some uh, cycle, one complete cycle. Okay, well, this is called one complete cycle, okay? Okay, try to imagine that thing, okay? The glider move from, uh, okay? So, this here is V equals to zero. That means, okay, it doesn't move. Yeah. Maybe the somebody have pulled uh, the glider at X equals to A, okay? And then it release. Okay, and after that, but then you can get V. Okay, it release, okay? At X equals to zero, uh, goes to X equals to negative A. Okay, well, why they uh, didn't use X equals to A? x equals to negative a because x equals to negative a is b after the zero after the zero line okay because the zero is here okay whatever happened on the uh, uh, on the right of the uh, zero is called is called positive a and whatever happens in the left of the zero point is called negative a okay it's simple as that okay so v equals to zero and then it stops at v equals uh, x equals to negative a Okay, does it stop that? No, because of the spring constant, uh, the, because of the spring, the nature of the spring have a restoring force. Okay, it must oppose back the positions of where it's coming. 
it goes back to x equals to 0 and then finally comes back to x equals to 8. So, uh, as a physicist, uh, we should uh, learn these things uh, properly because uh, from the, the, the situation, okay, they have created, okay, they have created some uh, equations or some um, graph. We call that as a sinusoidal graph. Okay, it is sinusoidal graph. Okay, so we can plot the graph of x versus t. Okay, x versus time. Okay, try to imagine that. Okay, this is where the positions of the original one, the glider. Okay, the glider at the x equals to a. The glider at x equals to a okay and then it goes back to zero okay x equals to zero and then it goes to x equals to negative a it goes back to x equals to zero and then finally you reach at back at the reach back at the x equals to a so that is considered as one complete oscillation so that's why uh, they have put the uh, sign that the period is taken to be one complete oscillation. Okay, from the one complete oscillation, we can manage to get period. So this is where you get the period from the graph. Okay, it's either here or maybe here. Okay, it's the same because it repeats itself over and over again. And okay? but, but but you can see here over some three cycles you can have some time okay we can measure some times okay which means the time is, uh, is now we have three uh, period uh, we have three oscillations okay because the motion repeating itself at some three different uh, ha uh, have an equivalent to some times over three period of oscillation oscillation Okay, the position, because X is considered to be position, the highest amplitude is called amplitude. Okay, not the highest amplitude, the highest displacement. Okay, highest displacement. Highest displacement. is called amplitude. Okay, the highest displacement is called amplitude. Right, because we have a certain amount of uh, oscillations, uh, we can certain amount of position, the highest one, zero, and the negative A. Okay, so that is called silver soil, the graph. Okay, does it uh, considered to be what is silver soil, the graph is actually uh, when we learn, when we learn uh, the trigonometry uh, function, so we can say that. It is a sine or cosine graph. But, but in terms of the specific what we have done to the uh, situations here, what uh, does it call sine or cosine curve? Okay, so how come uh, how how to measure or how to um, to know uh, the either the graph is sine or cosine? Okay, so basically. When we, when the graph starts at the amplitude, starts at amplitude, is called cosine, cosine graph. Okay, if the graph starts at zero, so it's considered to be a sine graph. Okay, so sine or cosine graph depending on where it starts at the motions eh? where the motion starts okay so from this graph okay uh, yes of course we need to know the the graph but how can we get from the graph yes the uh, equations uh, this is what we call equations okay so from this graph okay where it have some um, highest displacement, okay, highest displacement, okay, 
and it's also contain some period of, of oscillations okay from the period we can get frequency okay of course when you look at the graph so you need to know you need to establish some equations so this is other kind of the equations that we have to uh, come out from the graph okay it's saying here that from this graph okay we can say that x is actually equivalent to a cos of whatever happens in the 2 pi over period times t 2 pi over period times t so what is 2 pi over period it is also equivalent to a cos omega t because 2 omega 2 pi over t is equivalent to omega Okay. A cos omega t is considered to be omega. Right? So, how can know? How can we know? First, you need to know the graph is either sine or cosine graph. And then, at the first um, things that you should put on the, uh, on, the, um, on the graph, on the equation itself, okay, or the graph function itself, is the displacement. So, in this case, the highest displacement of the graph is considered to be M amplitude. Okay, amplitude is the highest displacement. Maybe if the question or if the graph stated here as 10, then you need to put 10 cos omega t, for, for example. Okay, because that is considered to be the highest displacement. Right, so what is omega? What is t? T here is considered to be time taken for complete cycle. Okay, and how about omega here? Omega here is a angular frequency. Okay, angular is omega frequency. Okay, look back, x equivalent to a cos omega t. Of course, after this, say, this is what we call as the equations of position as a function of time. Position, okay, x equals to position, a cos omega t. After this, we will learn how can we manage to get v and after that to get a. What is the kind of equations? at v and also a so that means we need to do some things to our original equations okay so let's look at the examples first an air track okay card attached to a spring complete one oscillation every 2.4 seconds one complete that means this is the p period okay at time t equals to zero the card is released from rest okay at time t equals to zero that means no uh, no time taken yet okay the the cut is released from rest at a distance of 0 0.1 meters so this should be your e your amplitude because that is the uh you pull some at some point at least until 0 0.1 meters and then you release that means that is the highest displacement Okay, the highest displacement, which means a 0 0.1 meters from its original position. What is the position of the cut at time eh, at 0 0.3 seconds? This is time, 0 0.6 seconds, also time 2.7 and also 3.0 second. Okay, so in this case, okay, we should look, the, the, the question asks about per position. So that means from the original one, x equals to a cos omega t. A cos omega t. Okay. What is a cos omega t? <clears throat> so, a cos omega t, the highest displacement. Okay, look. You look back. What is omega? Omega is 2 pi over t. Maybe you can also write down as 2 pi f. Because that is also equivalent to omega. Angular frequency. Okay, it's either using period or you can use frequency. Okay, <clears throat> so in this case, you need to calculate based on the equation. So, A cos omega t, look at how they 
uh, did the questions, okay, they established first the equation, they, they write down the equations, and then they replace it, substitute with the, with the value, A equals to 0 0.1, they look at the unit meters, okay, cost is still cost, 2 pi is still 2 pi, uh, period will be 2.4 seconds, and time will be 0 0.3 seconds at question A. Okay, 0 0.6 seconds at question B, 2.7 seconds at question C, and 3.0 seconds at question D. Okay, but how come from this part they can get pi over 4? Okay, so they have multiplied with 0 0.2.4 and with 0 0.3, they simplify it and to get the pi over 4, pi over 2, 9, over, uh, 9 pi over 4, and 5 uh, pi over 2 okay and of course you look carefully how come they get 7.1 centimeter 7.1 centimeter if you um, uh, you convert it to meters okay so 1 and 2 so the answer is 0 0.071 meters okay 0 0.071 meters how can how come can they get the 0 0.071 meters okay with the use, uh, using these equations yes the answer is whatever happens on the cost part okay here okay i should highlight it because maybe after this you will you, you tend to forget these things okay 0 0.1 okay no problem you can punch in your calculator but on the cost side cosine side here everything that i highlighted on the box here is should be calculated in uh, you should calculate it in terms of in the mode of radian okay you should calculate it using your calculator uh, in radian of this so that means cost whatever happens in the in the in the in the bracket okay please calculate it okay uh, using radian mode and then you, you multiply with 0 0.1 in order to get the answers. Okay, so please bear in mind for, for this equation, okay, the, the, uh, the sample harmonic equation is a radian mode calculations. Okay, radian mode calculations. So you should calculate here everything inside this box in the radian. Then you multiply with 0 0.1. So when you multiply, doesn't matter because you have already get the the answers in um, radian mode. Okay, so everything that happens on the on these sides, okay, on the on this uh, uh, box should be calculated in radian mode. Okay, remember calculate it with the radian mode in order to get the answers. Okay, so the answer should be written in the SI unit. That means 0 0.071 meters. Okay, not just uh, what they did over here, 7.1 centimeters. If the questions want you to answer it in centimeter, then you can write in centimeter. But to be on the safe side, please calculate or please write down your answers in meters. Okay? Right. So, <clears throat> this is how you can connect between the uniform circular motions and the simple harmonic motions okay so basically from our thoughts in terms of positions okay we can say that a cos omega t is the positions of the simple harmonic motion okay a cos omega t is considered to be positions of the simple harmonic motions okay and then we also know that the omega okay which means the angular speed before this, angular speed, is considered to be 2 pi over period. Okay, 2 pi over period. Right? And it's also can read, the answer is of 2 pi over period can be written down as 2 pi over f. Uh, sorry, 2 pi f, which also means as angular frequency. Again, I can highlight it at this one is the angular speed or angular velocity. Okay, it can be written down as angular 
frequency <coughs> because we can refer to pi over t to the omega okay the unit for the angular frequency is still second negative one or first all right how can we get b okay the equations b right so in this case uh no, please note that x is equivalent to a cos omega t okay a is actually is equivalent to a cos omega t so how can we get v okay try to imagine that if you want to get v is based on dx over dt okay dx over dt that means the differentiation of x as a function of time you need to differentiate this equation you need to differentiate the equations in order to get velocity how can we easily get the equations okay so uh, in terms of okay let me uh, teach you how to differentiate x okay so in the x we get we have a and we have cos omega t we have two terms a and also cos omega t remember cos omega t uh, if you want to calculate it you must calculate it in radian mode okay radian mode times with your a now you have one terms and two terms okay so you need to differentiate in terms of as a function of time okay so v equivalent to dx over dt again i want to highlight that that the velocity is dx over dt later on acceleration is dv over dt okay that means you need to calculate it so how to uh, differentiate okay first dx over dt <coughs> at first you need uh, you can just put the a here put the a first okay and then you need to differentiate cos omega t okay cos omega t but first before uh, you 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 differentiate cos omega t remember it, in the in the in the second term it has cos and also omega t cos something and also omega t because we differentiate against time so that means everything here must be also uh, differentiate because it contains p okay so in a way <clears throat> when you uh, differentiating cos something cos something so you will tend to get okay try to imagine you differentiate cos theta you will get negative sign if you differentiate sine you will get a negative cos sorry you will get cos theta differentiate sine will get you cos differentiate cos will get you negative sine so in here when we uh, differentiate cos some things you will get negative sine omega t just put it that way okay negative sine omega t and then you differentiate okay on this part only omega t so you will get another omega so the answer is negative a omega sine omega t for v same as this answer negative a omega sine omega t if you don't uh, don't want to burden yourself with the how can we calculate or how can we came up with the uh differentiation how to get the differentiation of x you just have to uh, rem uh, try to um, memorize okay try to memorize the equation v is equivalent to negative a omega sine omega t but for those that who want don't want to memorize it you can uh, derive it with the x equals to omega t and the answer for v is negative a omega sine omega t okay and how come the acceleration okay from the v equivalent to negative a omega 
sine omega t. How can we get e? E is equivalent to dv over dt. Okay, e equivalent to dv over dt. Okay, as usual, as usual, okay, everything is that. Now we have one terms and two terms. One terms and two terms. But remember, this negative is belong to the negative sign. Okay, belongs to the negative sign. So, uh, when we put it on, on the uh, beginning of the equations, so we just use negative e omega. So, just leave it that way. And then whatever happens, you try to uh, replicate the, the situations before this, which means right now you need to differentiate sign something. So, you will get cos omega t. And then again, you differentiate the omega t itself, so you will get another O omega. So the answer is negative A, sorry, negative A omega. Okay, this one is, can bring it to the front. Omega square cos omega. Okay, negative A omega square cos omega. Okay, so that is how you get it. Okay, so again, I want to highlight it. So x is equivalent to a cos omega t. V is equivalent to negative a. Don't forget the negative. Omega sine omega t. And a, you will get negative a omega square cos omega t. Okay. Now you have three equations. Okay. So uh, right now, okay, x is the position. V is the uh, speed or velocity, and A is the acer acceleration. Okay, inside the equations of position, velocity, and acceleration, uh, in terms of simple harmonic motion, okay, we have some uh, radian mode um, part. Okay, radian mode. So this is where the parts of the radian mode: cos omega t, sine omega t cos omega t. If you look carefully, this is how uh, they replica, they represent themselves in the graph. For example, the acceleration is cos omega t. Look at that. Where is cos omega t? Here. This is the acceleration. That means it starts from the negative a omega square. Okay. That is where you get the negative a omega square as the highest amplitude. Okay, if you look at the velocity, where does it start? Here, this is V at x equals to zero. Sorry, at V equals to zero. That's why the graph of V is negative A omega sine because the sine graph starts at zero where the cosine graph starts at the amplitude. Okay, so that's why we can say that for the velocity, uh, it starts at zero. And this is how represent the graph. Okay. Alright. So, in here, they also noted that okay, about the maximum. Okay, the maximum. The maximum means that the cosine part, okay, or, or the radian mode part is considered to be 1. For example, this one becomes 1. Uh, not, not I. Eh? This should be 1. Okay. This one becomes 1. Everything in the bubble, it becomes 1. This one becomes 1. So, the x maximum is considered to be A. V maximum is considered to be A omega. Okay, without the negative. Eh? And A maximum is considered to be A omega squared. As I said, the negative is belong to the sign. Okay, for example, in this part, negative is belong to the sign, and negative for this part is belong to the negative cos. So that's why we can get the maximum displacement is amplitude, the, the maximum speed is om A omega, and uh, maximum acceleration is A omega square. A omega square. Okay, 
So there are three things that you should know today. Is the number number one is how to get the angular frequency. First, you need to know uh, the concepts of a simple harmonic motions. Okay, the concepts of repeating, uh, repeating, uh, repeating uh, the the concepts of period and frequency. Okay, that means the repeating motions. Okay. And then you should know about the simple harmonic motion that contains the movement in terms uh, of repeating over and over again, but okay, it's uh, due to some position, velocity, and also acceleration. Every uh, parameters, okay, for, for example, we have position, we have velocity, when we have accelerations, must be equals to. Okay, must be equals to uh, some point on the graph. Okay, and remember, okay, now we go to this part. Okay, x is equivalent to a cos omega t, v is equivalent to negative a omega sine omega t, and acceleration is equivalent to negative a omega squared cos omega t. And then remember, Inside the equation itself, it contains some radiant mode. Okay, so the, what I'm circling is here is where you need to calculate it in radian. Okay, but when the value is equivalent to one, that is considered to be maximum of its term. Okay, for example, maximum of displacement is a because cos omega t becomes one. Whatever happened to negative sine omega t becomes 1, then you can get V max equals to A omega. Okay? And then whatever happens when the negative cos omega t becomes maximum, becomes 1, then you can get the A maximum equivalent to A omega squared. Okay? So that's, uh, I think, enough for today. Okay, again, I want to highlight it, these three equations. Okay, where you can have x equivalent to a uh, cos omega t. Okay, uh, if you try to, uh, this is what we learn in the survey textbook, okay, in, in your textbook. But uh, if you wish to flip over some other reference book, maybe they will start at a sine omega t. Okay, this is not important because, okay, uh, sometimes a student will ask, does it true that x equivalent to x a, a sine omega t? Yes. Okay, because they are using the equations starting from zero like this. So this is the original one. Okay, so that means V, they have to know what kind of equation becomes. A also. So, uh, then you can have different value of V, different value of A, in terms of equations only. But in physics, okay, uh, it doesn't change much because whatever happens, we learn uh, in, the, in the concepts of periodic motion, the, it, it's just a matter of how it starts. Maybe it starts from zero and then it's, uh, 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 or maybe it starts at the amplitude at the maximum value. So that is the only matter. Okay, because the graph is still sinusoidal. Try to uh, close some point. Okay, maybe, maybe uh, just close uh, using your other hands okay? or on where it begins. Then you didn't have information enough. Uh, what is the kind of graph? Does it a sine graph or a cosine graph? Okay. So that's why don't uh, get complicated, don't be confused in terms of this. Just uh, learn doing uh, because uh, I'm focusing on the survey textbook, using a survey textbook that x equivalent to a cos omega t. And then the v and a will follow. But if you use some other reference book, maybe you will tend to see that maybe some writers will write down as a sine omega t. But that doesn't matter. 
the equation is still correct. Okay, but on the V and also A, you must follow from where it's originated from. Okay, so that is my point. Okay, then I've, I think I'll stop here. Okay, do you have any questions? Ada soalan? Regarding simple, uh, the, the introductions of the simple harmony motion, you have any questions? Tak ada, sir. Okay. I think... Okay, so let, first let me share the slide uh, of what we have learned uh, before this. Okay. Right. So this should be the topics, which is the simple harmony motions, SHM. Okay, uh, we have already uh, learned about the periodic motions. Okay, a motion that repeats itself over and over again. <coughs> right, and it's also related to frequency, which is frequency is one over period, which is one over t. That is also equivalent to second negative one. Okay, second negative one, or also called, uh, also known as Hertz, right? So one, uh, one uh, complete cycle is actually uh, one <coughs> a, a time required for one complete oscillations, okay, that is equivalent to one period, right? And these are the some examples of uh, the relationship between period frequency and also angular frequency. So as you know, the angular frequency, the angular frequency is based on uh, omega. Omega equivalent to 2 pi f. Okay, omega is equivalent to 2 pi f. <coughs> okay. So these are the motions of the simple harmony. <coughs> Okay. simple harmonic motion which evolve from the spring uh, or a system like a spring that uh, contains spring uh, from the equilibrium positions okay which we can see that the spring is actually oscillates okay oscillates uh, from left to right from left, uh, right to left okay in order uh, it begins to show some rhythm okay to so show some rhythm in terms of uh uh, locations, uh, rhythms, and also it will uh, create uh, a sinusoidal graph. Okay, what we call as a sinusoidal graph. <coughs> so, what is a sinusoidal graph? Uh, it is is it a graph of a sine or cosine graph? Okay, sine or cosine graph. Right, because uh, uh, in what uh, in which we will have, uh, we can see. There is some highest displacement at the graph, which we also call that as the amplitude. Okay, highest displacement is the amplitude of the graph, right? So the period can be uh, seen or can be calculated from the peak between the peak and also another peak from the graph, which is from here to here. Okay from peak to peak that we can also establish that as a, a period <clears throat> okay so uh, regardless of the sinusoidal okay sinusoidal is a uh, it's like a wavy graph okay it's not a straight line graph it's a wavy graph a uh, graph which 
can start okay which can start at the zero or at the highest displacement okay this is what we call highest displacement Okay, that's why the highest displacement is called amplitude. All right. Um, so the graph can either be a start at zero. Okay. That is also known as sine graph or cosine graph. In our uh, uh, lesson, okay, we will learn according to the survey textbook. And the survey textbook, okay, will use uh, the graph that starts at the amplitude. Okay, the graph that starts at the amplitude is equivalent to uh, a cos omega t. Okay, x equivalent to a cos omega t. So what is a cos omega t? So a is basically the highest displacement or amplitude. It should be placed at the beginning of the equations or the function. And cos omega t is based on the type of graph, type of cosine graph. Okay, which is uh, the cos omega t and omega here is the angular frequency. Okay, what is the formula of the angular frequency? Omega equals to 2 pi f. Omega equals to 2 pi f. And if we want to plot x against t, then we believe, uh, I believe that okay, we can have x equivalent to a cos omega t. Okay, and for, for, as usual, okay, in the motions, okay, because this also involves a motion, but motion in simple harmonic, okay. So, uh, we can see that okay, it started from the x equals to a cos omega t as the position. And after that, after some a simple differentiation, then it becomes negative a omega sine omega t. And then... After some uh, different, uh, simple differentiation, and then it becomes a omega square cos omega t. Okay, a okay starting from x equals to a cos omega t. Okay, v equals to negative a omega sine omega t, and acceleration is negative a omega square cos omega t. So now we have three uh, functional that we can. Uh, a, a sketch a graph and also we can use this kind of functional in order to to do some problems okay so uh, i believe that okay the one that i highlighted here okay the one that i should put it in box okay the blue box here is what we call as a radian mode calculations okay so in order to uh, get the right uh, uh, way uh, to solve the problems okay whatever happens in the blue box that i read uh, that i i put it in the in the in the <coughs> in these equations okay you need to do it in the radian mode okay so you need to calculate so in um to be on the safe side okay you put uh, your calculator into the radian mode in order to calculate this kind of uh, equations Okay, so whatever happens on the beginning, okay, the one that I put that in the some sort like a circle uh, 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 um, uh, or an orange circle uh, at the X, B and E is what we call as the um, maximum value, okay, maximum value for each is either positions, velocity, and acceleration. Okay, uh, whatever happens to the uh, uh, what happens to the uh, negative sign? Okay, negative sign is belong belong to the cosine graph. Okay, belong to the uh, three trigonometry functional graph. Okay, so don't worry about the negative or positive because that is equivalent. Uh, is is uh, uh, because we don't have to put the negative value at the sign then we we need to put it at the beginning of the uh, uh, functional okay so so that is how we can derive some equations or some uh, functional okay with regards to the its own graph okay we have seen here let's say the velocity 
V equals to negative V equals to negative A omega sine omega T. Negative means it starts from the negative sign, the negative sign. So that's why it starts from below. Okay, from below it's going up. Okay, and it's going until it reach some point. Okay, the one that uh, I highlighted here. Okay. Okay, that green, that uh, purple color is what we call as the uh, graph or of V versus T, of V versus T, in which we want to show that where is actually um, V, okay, with compare to X, okay. This is X, basically this is X, okay, this is your X, right the positions and this is v okay and you can see that v has a negative a omega sine omega t that means the graph is sine graph that means well, when we talk about sine graph is must start at the zero it must start at the zero okay this, so this is zero All right but the negative means uh, it goes to the below part first and then it's going up until it reach the amplitude Okay, but the amplitude now is not just amplitude, but you must multiply with the omega. Eh? Amplitude times omega. So that is a, a, a maximum value for velocity. And of course, the rhythm will still continue over and over again. Because it is a simple harmonic motions. Okay, so on the acceleration part, okay, again, so, so this part is the x. Okay, that means a cos omega t. Right, so whatever happens to the acceleration, okay, acceleration is the negative a omega square cos omega t, negative a omega square omega t. So that means you must follow the cosine graph, which start at the amplitude, okay. But the amplitude for this uh, acceleration is a omega square, okay, a omega square. That means, okay, it must be greater than. Velocity. Let's see if we want to if you want to uh, draw a velocity like this one. Okay, so the velocity maybe will take part from this part. Okay, okay, but not that as much. Something like that. Okay, it's, it starts from zero. Okay, and will be turning on, right? And will be a sinusoidally. The sinusoidal is where uh, the sine or cosine graph is a matter of uh, how we're going to start at the graph, okay? Maybe the graph starts at zero, okay? We can call it as a sine graph, yeah? And the graph that starts at the amplitude or at the value, we call that as the cosine graph. So that is a matter of um, how we're going to explain or we, uh, how we're going to write down. But if you uh, just ignore at the beginning of the graph so we can see that everything is all the sinusoidal okay we cannot differentiate between cosine and sine graph so it's a matter of the uh, how you start the, the the graph is uh you can determine uh, uh, either the graph is sine or cosine okay so the maximum value for a is a omega square again okay i would like to remind you that okay everything uh, that belongs to the part uh to the this blue box, okay, is in radian mode. So the maximum for the radian mode is one. Okay, everything is becomes one, one, satu, eh, becomes one. This one is also becomes one, becomes one at the maximum value. Okay, at the maximum value, everything inside the blue box, okay, is considered to be one. So what's left is just a, a omega, and also a omega squared. So we can write down here that x maximum, okay, x maximum is equivalent to a, v maximum is equivalent to a omega, and a maximum is equivalent to a omega squared, okay, in terms of value, okay. So these are the function. Again, I want to highlight it, okay. So at least try to learn, okay. To learn to differentiate, if you want, if you want, if you uh, uh, having some uh, difficulty, 
to do some integration uh, so to do some differentiation so please okay try to memorize uh, how, what, uh, whatever happens uh, how to differentiate uh, how to uh, 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 to write down v and a for the simple harmonic motions okay so so that x equals to a omega uh, a cos omega t v equals to negative a omega sine omega t and a is equivalent to negative a square cos omega t and again i want to highlight it now that uh, we are currently using the survey textbook so the survey textbook uh, is used uh, use uh, the concept of x the position starts at the um, that means the graph of x starts from at the amplitude. Okay, but sometimes, okay, maybe some other writers on the other books, okay, will start that x equals to a sine omega t. Yes, there are some writers that start at a sine omega t. Okay, if you try to refer to another reference book, maybe you will tend to see that maybe some writers will write down as a sine omega t. As I said to you, okay don't be confused okay uh, you will see that thing because this is just a matter of a sine or cosine graph what what is important is you know the kind of graph okay which is the sinusoidal graph okay so at least you know how to draw okay what is the cos graph and also the sine graph. the difference between cos and also sine graph okay doesn't matter there because what we uh, we actually uh, concentrate more is what is a what is omega what is t what is frequency okay so that is most important thing when we talk about uh, the simple harmonic functional graph okay functional equations right but accordingly okay accordingly you need to know when you start at a sine omega t as the position then the v will be the different uh, the v will follow from x okay don't follow this one okay because uh, let's say if you want to differentiate v from a sine omega t then it becomes what okay let me simplify this one okay now it becomes okay okay because sine sine of the graph okay when you differentiate sine graph so you will get cos okay so it becomes a omega cos omega a square a omega square uh, a omega cos omega t and then if you differentiate back the accelerations then it becomes negative a omega square sine omega t right? because if we differentiate cos then you will get negative sign so that's why the negative is there okay so you can see there are some similarities between the maximum value okay a you get a a omega you get a omega here a square is also a square here okay so in terms of maximum value is all the same and whatever happens after the maximum value that that is what we call as a radian part okay, the radian part the maximum everything in the radian part will becomes one okay so that is uh, don't get confused okay if you tend to see that if they starting to write down or to refer that x equals to a sine omega t okay but for our terms for our uh, no, uh, this is just for the knowledge okay but in our term we will use x equals to a cos omega t and so on okay so these are uh, some uh, the, the different if you can see uh, 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 from graph a b and c so this is the position okay these are the velocity and this one is the acceleration okay if you uh, tend to see uh, the beginning part then you will know okay this kind of graph is what this kind of graph is what okay but if you tend to see that let's say let's just uh, use this uh, dotted line Okay, as the separation, that means you ignore this part. Okay, you ignore this part, right? So 
we cannot if we try to imagine it then try to close that part okay okay don't put in, in your view just look at this part and so on okay we cannot easily um uh know uh, which graph is either cos or sine okay? we cannot differentiate between cos and sine graph because the cos and sine graph only can be labeled when we look at the beginning of the graph okay at the starts of the graph so that's why uh, the most important thing the sinusoidal graph okay and also the different how we can differentiate between x v and e okay all right so let's look at these uh, examples uh, the examples of 13 1 an air track card okay again so this is air track okay for those uh, who doesn't know that the air track is the some steel uh, some steel uh, uh, platform steel platform like this eh? so this is air track okay looking at this point of view okay so this is your eye looking okay that the other tepi eh? side you can see that the air track is um, okay the the surface of the uh, top of the air track eh? have a, a lot of pool that hole can compress a lot of wind or air okay will be will blow air from the blower let's say this is the blower okay you connect this one to the blower and then you will okay uh produce uh, very uh high um, velocities of air okay and if you put glider this is the glider okay the glider is also made from steel okay maybe without the without the air the steel uh, that um, we put steel on the steel okay so we can have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, friction okay a lot of friction right but if we put or give some uh, air to that uh, surface then it can levitate okay they are they are can I can so glider like this uh, it will levitate the steel and to make that this steel will have no friction so that's why we are using air track okay an air track attached to a spring oscillates one oscillation every 2.4 seconds so this should be the period so that is how they, they write down one oscillation every 2.4 seconds at time t equals to zero the card is released from rest with a spring stretch to so this one is some x okay maybe when we talk about spring so we need to know about f equals to negative kx okay because uh, this is the hook's law right what is hook's law it involve some elast elastic thing okay such as spring Okay, which have a force, the spring constant K and also elongation X, right? From its equilibrium position, what are the velocity and the accelerations of the cut at time T equals to 0 0.3 seconds and B 0 0.6 seconds? Okay, so at the moment, we need to know what is the velocity and acceleration. So, uh, because uh, the question doesn't give you uh, uh, some uh, x, okay, some x in here, okay. So in we at least do we really need to know that the x started at a cos omega t, a cos omega t, and then it goes after that. So the v is negative a omega sine omega t and a is negative a omega square cos omega t okay at least you need to know okay because not all questions will give you position uh, the, the the functional of positions okay so at least you must uh, get at least one uh, to memorize okay for example the x Okay, which we start at the magnitude, so A cos omega T. So what is omega in this part? So it's calculated here, 2.6 radian per second. Look at the unit. 
2.6 radian per second because is it or omega. Okay, in the previous chapter, the omega is called uh, angular velocity, angular speed. Okay, but in this chapter, we are, we know omega as the angular frequency. Okay, angular frequency. So omega is 2 pi over t and 2 pi over 2.4. So you can calculate, get 2.6 radian per second. Okay, again, the V is negative A omega sine omega t. Look at how they write down the equations and they put the value. So here, they put that acceleration, uh, sorry, uh, amplitude as 0 0.1. Okay, 0 0.1 because uh, we take the card and, okay, and then we stretch it until it reaches 0 0.1 meters. That means that is the highest displacement of the card. The highest displacement of the card Okay, in the Hooke's law, we call that as x. But if you want to put that inside the equations of V equals to negative A omega sine omega T, then that value, that 0 0.1 meters, is actually amplitude. Because that is the maximum value, so the amplitude. Okay, whatever happens when you want to uh, start the, uh, the simple harmonic motions, you must start at one point, particular point. Okay? That particular point is the highest a displacement you can get from the situation. So that is a uh, e, okay, which is 0 0.1. Look at the 0 0.1 is the unit uh, meters. Okay, then omega is 2.6 radian per second and sine with 2 pi over t times with 0 0.3 seconds. But remember to calculate this value, okay, we using the radian mode. In fact, when you look at the equation negative a omega sine omega t, please already used them, a ray, uh, a ray, uh, um, radian uh, mode, okay, please use a radian mode, so you will get negative 18 centimeter per second, okay, centimeter per second, right, so <clears throat> next part, okay, so you want to calculate that uh, negative a omega square cos omega t because it also wants to find the acceleration, okay, the accelerations. So what is the accelerations here? So negative a omega, again, this one omega square cos omega t, you replace with the 0 0.3 and then you will get negative 48 centimeter per second. Look at the unit centimeter per second, okay. Maybe the answer uh, is actually negative 0 0.18 meter per second. So they replace the 0 0.8 Okay, they replace back the 0 0.8 to get 18 centimeter per second because they do, they want some a uh, real number they they, they, do, they don't want the decimal number but doesn't matter okay, if you tend to get the negative 0 0.18 meter per second just left the negative 0 0.18 meter per second okay don't try to convert it to centimeter per second okay and the acceleration is negative 48 centimeter per second square. Okay, remember to use radian mode. Again, uh, they replicate the, 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 the answers. Okay, but right now they have replaced the 0 0.3 with the 0 0.6 seconds. Okay, and they will tend to get the value of negative 26 centimeter per second. Uh, and the last part, acceleration, they will get it as Z0. Okay. Alright, so the turbulence. Okay, on the December 29, 1907, a United Airlines flight from Tokyo to Honolulu was hit with severe turbulence 31 minutes after takeoff. Okay, 31 minutes after takeoff. Okay, data from the airplane, uh, airplane's black box indicate the 747 move up and down. Okay, move up and down. So actually, the, the, pro, the process of move up and down. Okay, with some speed, okay, with so some speed, okay, will create some simple harmonic. Okay, so this is why they want to calculate. Will create some harmonic motion, okay, because you're repeating with an amplitude. So this one is considered as a, a and the maximum acceleration is 1.8 g. This one is a, a acceleration, okay, maximum acceleration is 1.8 g. Treating the up and down motion of the plane as simple harmonic 
find a, the time required for one complete oscillation. So what is that? They want to find period B. Okay, and then part B is the plane's maximum vertical speed. Plane's maximum vertical speed. We will look at later on what is the plane's maximum verti vertical speed because that is not included in here. Okay, so again, the maximum acceleration is 1.8 G. Okay, maximum acceleration. But we know that the acel maximum acceleration, okay, from the simple harmonic test, is that will give you A omega square. Okay, here, A omega square. So, in order to get T, so we need to know that omega is 2 pi over T. Then we can use this kind of information to get here. So, in order to do that, 2 pi over, okay, the square root of, so the square root of A max over A, okay, which is A max is 1.8 G. 1.8 G means that 1.8 times with 9.8. G is our gravity. Okay, some sort like 1, 1 G, 2 G, 3 G. Okay, let's say, uh, and of course, the, uh, the amplitude is 30 meters. So you will get 8.2 seconds. 8.2 seconds. And uh, part B, the plane's maximum vertical speed, maximum vertical split, uh, speed is A omega, which is 2 pi A. Okay, this one, maximum speed, A omega. So, what is omega? 2 pi over T. So, you will get 23, point, 23 meter per second. Okay, hold on for a moment. Uh, let's take a break for one minute. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so this is another one example of the vibrating object string system. Find the amplitude, frequency, and period of motion for an object vibrating at the end of horizontal spring. Okay, at the end of horizontal spring, if the equation for its collision as a function of time is given. Okay, in this kind of examples, they have already give, give uh, some equations for us. Okay, so please remember x equivalent to a cos omega t. So, from this part, you will know that A is what? A is, A is 0 0.25 and this part is the omega and T is, okay, if the question asks you, 
find the amplitude. So the amplitude will, amplitude will be 0 0.25 meters. Okay, the frequency. Okay, the frequency. Okay, you cannot get frequency from here. Maybe you can also get the frequency from. Okay, um, two omega equals to two pi f, or maybe you can write down this one as uh, omega equals to two pi over t. So two pi f also knows as f. So from here, okay, you will get f equals to two like. 0.0625 hertz and from frequency you will get period uh, okay so amplitude frequency and period of a motion then okay and part b is find the maximum magnitude of the velocity and the acceleration again maximum maximum velocity and acceleration Maximum velocity and acceleration. Look at how they write down maximum uh, velocity is a omega and maximum acceleration is a omega squared. Okay, but look at how they answer it. The value will be in meter per second and also meter per second squared. Okay, and, and the C part is what are the positions, velocity and accelerations of the object after one second has elapsed. Okay, that means it includes some time. Okay, so again, they are using x, uh, using the same equation, but they put the value 1 at t. Okay, so again, everything that in the, uh, in the bracket okay, will be, um, will be uh, calculated in radian mode. So cos 0 0.393 radian, Okay, times with 0 0.25, then you will get 0 0.231 meters. Okay, 0 0.231 meters. And again, uh, they want us to find what its position, velocity, and also acceleration. So, you need to do it again. Okay, you need to do it again using some velocity and also acceleration. Okay, but remember to use a radian mode function okay radian mode function okay so let's look at the next part which is the period of mass on a spring so what is the period of mass on a spring okay so in this part we want to um we want to know the period of a mass but right now and the system on a spring the spring system but let's start with the uh, fun, uh, the, uh, the first thing that comes when it when it comes to the mass and also spring okay so we want to highlight it that it starts it starts from the f equals to ma but on the in terms of spring when you put the spring inside the force so we can say that ma is equivalent to what is F? F is also known as negative Kx. Okay, S is also known as negative Kx. Right, so you can put it here F negative Kx. So M A equals to negative Kx. So M is mass and K is the spring constant. And what is acceleration? Yes, okay. This acceleration is created, it is also can create a, some harmonic motion. X is also can, uh, can, um, can create harmonic motions. So based on our thoughts that X is what? Okay, remember X is A cos omega T while A is negative A omega square cos omega T. Okay, so right now we can see here, here is A omega square cos omega T and X is A cos omega T. And then of course, uh, we look at uh, you will have you, you can see that at this part you can uh, factorize m omega square and then what's left is negative a cos omega t and on this part okay the, you can also factorize a negative k and sorry negative you put it here a cos omega t Okay, 
So negative A or cos omega t and negative A cos omega t, you can cancel out. What's left is just m omega square equivalent to k. m omega square equivalent to k. So we can write down that omega square is equivalent to k over m. And of course, w uh, omega is equivalent to square root of k over m. Okay, so this is how they derive some period either because we want to find the period on a, uh, of a mass on a spring. Okay, so but before this, we have learned that omega is 2 pi over period. 2 pi over period. So we have can replace this thing inside here so that 2 pi over t is equivalent to square root of k over m and then again okay we need to differentiate this one because we want to t as a, a sense object so t is equivalent to 2 pi of square root of m over k and not k over m because you have put this one okay to this part this one everything will bring this down Okay, so it will be substitute. The t is equivalent now to 2 pi square root of m over k. Okay. So at least you need to know that the period is t equals to 2 pi m over k. It's not time, but it is a period. Okay. You have already learned what is the difference between period and also time. Normally, we put time as t. Okay, period is t, but the, uh, the, the, the unit is still second and second for both. Therefore, the period is t equals to 2 pi x square root of m over k. So, you can see there, there are some different, uh, you can look at the, how they differentiate between one period. Okay, for example, this one is the increase force constant by a factor of 4. You can see... If you want to find period from crest to crest, okay, there is some difference between the the value of period. Okay, this one t. Okay, this one is also t. Okay, so you can see here on a mass on spring position versus time okay this one increased by a factor of four so the period will be longer uh, look at how they did that eh? they did so that means if you try to uh, um, at least know the relationship between all the parameters so uh, it's easier if you can um, uh, you can square all the value Okay, on the left side and the right side, you can square everything. So, you will get t square equivalent to 4 pi square m over k. So, from this part, you will know whatever happens to the m. Let's say you increase m by 2, whatever, what will happen to the t? What will happen to the k? Uh, so, that's how you determine. Okay, so that's how you determine either... Uh, that value will increase or decrease. Yeah. All right. So look at these examples. A zero point one two kilogram mass. Okay, attached to a spring oscillates with an amplitude of zero point zero seven five meters and a maximum speed. Remember, this is a V max. Maximum speed. Okay. It's 0.524 meter per second. Find A, the force constant. Okay, A is they want to find what is the K. It's force constant. And part B is to find the period of motion. So it's given here is mass. Okay, and the amplitude A. Now we have mass, we have A. So what can we done here? Uh, what can, uh, can be done here is, of course, you need to know that the V max. Okay, is equivalent to a omega. Okay, because from a, uh, from this part, this value we can have w. From w we can manage to get t. And 
from P and so on. We can find what is the other parts. Okay. So let's 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 play around. Okay. Because omega is V max over A. So V max is look at the value 0 0.5 to 4 meter per second and then 0 0.075. So you will get to see uh, the value of uh, omega is um, 6.99 radian per second. 6.99 radian per second. Okay. And then uh, omega is equivalent to the square root of K over M. Remember, omega is K of K, uh, square root of K over M. So from here we can get k that equivalent to 5.86 newton per meter please okay please try all these values together okay uh, punch uh, try to punch in your calculators okay so uh, the, the spray constant is 5.86 newton per meter and then uh, from that value you can have t okay you can remember uh, omega can be written down as 2 pi f if you wish to find what is the frequency, maybe uh, the, the omega also is equivalent to 2 pi over period. Yes. And another part is omega is the square root of k over m. There are three different equations that can relate to omega. Okay. Maybe you want to find that in terms of period, in terms of frequency, maybe in terms of spring and mass. Then you can, uh, uh, like, uh, you can use all the equations. Okay, so from uh, the value of t, the value, uh, maybe we can try using uh, omega equals to 2 pi over t, so you can get t, and from the, the equations that we had just uh, used or, or learned these things, uh, t equals to 2 pi square root of m over k, yes, we can also obtain the same answer. Okay, we can also obtain the same answer here which is 0 0.899 seconds. Alright. Okay. So, again, I want to highlight in terms of, for example, here. Okay. So, this one is contained spring. Okay. A 0 0.26 kilogram mass is attached to a vertical spring when the mass is put into motion, its period is 1.12 seconds. So if this one should be your period, E, how much does the mass stretch? How much does the mass stretch? So you want to find what is X. Or in this case, Y. Okay? Because both will also give you um, elongations. Okay? When it is at rest, in its equilibrium position. So this is what we call equilibrium position. The equilibrium position. Right? So what is F? What is Y? You can find here. Okay? Don't, don't tend to get confused because uh, we uh, uh, normally we just use F equals to negative KX <clears throat> but that is spring in X position. Well, we can also use F equals to negative ky uh, maybe in this kind of uh, view uh, there is some elongation in y axis this one is elongation in x axis that's the only difference okay then do, but this is not the, uh, uh, the different equation it's just the same equation but using some the parameters uh, that contribute to the uh, axis okay x or y that's simple as that okay so now we have a uh, uh, T and also mass, okay, mass. Uh, if we want to find what is the elongation, then we can calculate that using some sort of equations. Okay, so we have learned that T equivalent to 2 pi the square root of M over K. So this is the formula of period, okay, using mass and also spring constant. So our job is to find uh, uh, the first, eh, we, want, we need to find what is K. Okay, what is K? So, in here, we can get, okay, as a usual, we need to uh, uh, multiply, we, we need to square, okay, everything on the left side and the, I mean, square both sides, okay, left and right. So, in order to get T square equals to 4 pi square, 
m over k then the square root uh, sign will be off so this is easier for us to know what is k and we can bring k over here and bring t square down so in order to get k because using k okay we can find what is the elongation okay so that is the elongation right okay so right now we move to the energy conservation in oscillatory uh, but uh, i want to okay maybe you can look at this uh, i want to take a break first for a few minutes uh, maybe or for five minutes or two minutes okay and then we need you need to know uh, the, uh, before we can uh, proceed with the energy conservation all right stay tuned
Okay, let's continue back. Okay, so this is energy conservation in oscillatory motion. Okay, energy conservation in oscillatory motion. So as usual, when we talk about energy, okay, regardless of the situation, okay, we have seen from the the chapter of energy, and then it goes to the momentum, it goes to the um, uh, uh, motion in circular. And then now it goes to the simple harmonic motion. The energy will always be the same thing, which is when we talk about energy, the total energy must be equivalent to, okay, must be equivalent to kinetic energy plus with potential energy, kinetic energy plus potential energy. And regardless of the system, uh, perhaps on this part, the system that we are using is on the spring because we want to create some simple harmonic motions. Okay, so when we talk about spring, okay, the kinetic energy, the kinetic energy of the spring is equivalent to half mv squared. Okay, it's always half mv squared for the kinetic energy, and for the potential energy of the spring is considered to be half kx squared, half mv squared and half kx squared, but uh, we have now seen that x is equivalent to a cos omega t, while v is negative a omega square sine omega t. Okay, if you look carefully, x and v. Okay, inside here we have x, and we also have v have a different role. Okay, because that is not just an, a normal v, normal velocity. Because right now velocity will be in terms of a radian part which is a negative a omega square sine omega t while at x it's just not a normal x not just an elongation but right now it contain a cos omega t okay a cos omega t <clears throat> so uh, we can see here okay that u is equivalent to half kx square okay but right now if you try to uh, square the value of x the value of x then you may get half k a cos omega t square okay half a k a omega t square and if you try to calculate and if you try to um, do some um, uh, you try to expand the square then it becomes half k a square cos omega cos square omega t so what does it mean by cos square omega t it means cos omega t times with cos omega t so 2 cos omega t okay you multiply you square it same thing okay so that will be the value of potential energy okay u potential energy or we should know as pe potential energy half k is square cos omega square Okay, on the radiant mode part, which is at the back of this part. Okay, so this one, okay, uh, you can also use that value in radian because it contains cos square omega t. Okay, when the maximum potential energy will be when this part becomes 1. And then the only left is half ka square. Well, A is the amplitude of the motion. Okay, A is the amplitude of the motion and it should be A squared. Alright, so like right now, let's move to the potential kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is half mv squared. Okay, this one is U, K is Kx squared. Then U max, you will get half k a square okay half k a square this one is the kinetic energy half mv square that we look further on later okay so the v is negative a omega sine omega t 
So you need to put it here. Then it will become negative a omega sine omega t. And then you square it. Okay, whatever happens when you square it. So everything inside that will be squared. Okay, and like half m a square negative a square negative a when it's square it becomes positive a for a square and omega square sine square omega t and remember this is the part where we calculated in radian and in the maximum value this part will becomes one one okay this one become one and the only left which is the maximum kinetic energy will be half m a square omega square half m a square omega square okay and if you try to make that uh, uh, this one is pe maximum and this one is ke maximum okay so you can uh, easily uh, put that value okay the k or uh, we can uh, say that PE maximum in terms of PE maximum is equivalent to KE maximum. Okay. But uh, if you look carefully at the kinetic energy here, okay, we can also write it down in terms of, uh, for example, here. Okay. K because we, it contains amplitude. Okay, half m a square omega square sine omega t, the original one here. Okay, and then we can also write down, okay, because it contains omega, and we know that omega is what? Omega is square root of k over m. And because it's square, then the only left is k over m. So we can put it here, k over m, to replace the omega square. Okay sine square omega t and we can also cancel out this thing m and m and what's left is just half k is square sine square omega t okay half k is square sine square omega t which actually can be written down as k <coughs> Half k is square, square sine square omega t, and try to look at this part. Okay, the PE maximum. This one is the PE maximum. Sorry, this one is PE. This one is KE. Okay. So when the total energy equivalent to the potential, uh, potential, um, potential maximum, potential energy maximum, then everything here will be becomes one, and then what's left is just half k a square. Same thing happens when the total energy equivalent to the kinetic energy maximum, which is everything in here, becomes one. Okay, so what's left is just half m a square omega square. So we can uh, put that when u max, when e equals to e or u max equivalent to k max or p e max, okay, p e max equivalent to k e max, then we can write down as half k a square equivalent to half m a square omega square okay we can write down as half k a square equivalent to half m a square omega square here right so, uh, this diagram will show how the energy transform from potential energy uh, to kinetic and like, 
while the total energy remains the same. Okay, so this is the very good analogy. Okay, when you look at the concepts of potential and kinetic. When the potential reach the maximum value, let's say this is potential value. Okay, this is potential PE. Okay, potential energy maximum. And at that part, okay, KE zero. Okay, and the moment that potential energy drop, and you can see that the potential and the kinetic energy will gain its its energy, and then afterwards, okay. It reach at the maximum, so this is the kinetic energy maximum. At this point, you can see that the potential energy is zero. Okay, potential energy zero at that point, and then it, the process will repeat back. Okay, it will gain back the potential energy will gain back until it reach at this point, Pe maximum, and at that particular point. Uh, the kinetic energy drop at its lowest level, kinetic energy minimum or maybe zero. And then the process will keep going on again and again. So this is another some sort of sinusoidal graph. Okay, but what is important here is just a matter of the total energy cannot exceed this level. Okay, total energy cannot exceed this level here okay that means uh, the total the kinetic energy cannot get higher than that value okay the potential energy maximum cannot get higher than that value if it becomes ma maximum that's just a matter of the value that means here we can we can put that this one here is e ke okay, here is e pe e here is E. That means the total energy at that point is considered to be potential energy maximum. Okay, so that's how it works in terms of diagram. Okay, so let's look at these examples. Okay, of course, we can see a lot of examples in this part. A 0 0.98, a 0 0.98 kilogram block, okay, slides on a frictionless horizontal surface with a speed of 1.2 and uh, 1.2 so this one is mass this one is v okay the block encounters an unstretched spring okay unstretched unstretched spring okay with a force constant so this one is k right as shown in the sketch as shown in the sketch how far is the spring compressed before the block comes to rest how far? Okay, berapa jauh? So that means we want to find what is the x, or in this case, uh, that means the um, before it comes to rest, that means the maximum value of the x, the maximum value. So x maximum is a. So we want to find at at, at part a, we want to find what is the m amplitude. Okay, and how long? Is the block in contact with the spring before it comes to rest? This one we want to find T. Okay, so let's go. To, uh, let go. Uh, let's try to <clears throat> part A, which is the compression. Okay, uh, right now we have seen that. Okay, the maximum, the potential energy, uh, it comes from the uh, kinetic energy. Which okay, this one, this part contain half m v square. This is all potential energy, and then until it reach at that point where it can compress until it stop. Okay, that means the pot the kinetic energy being transformed to uh, potential energy. Half m v square be potential energy half k x square. Why we are using half k x square because it is a spring in a potential energy. Okay, spring potential energy. So half mv squared equals to half k a squared. Right? So a is equivalent to okay. We okay, we cancel out that a square equals to mv square over k and then a will be square root of okay mv square over k. And of course, the v square. You can take out the v square. 
it take out the V square and then just left with the M over K. Okay, the, the answer is 0 0.0835 meters. Okay, how long? Okay, and part B, how long is the block in contact with the spring before it comes to rest? Okay, before it comes to rest. So how long? So you need to know what is the period of the motion. Period of the motion. So what is the period of the motion? T equals to 2 pi m over k. T equals to 2 pi m over k. Right? Remember? T, you have learned 2 pi square root of m over k. Mass and also spring constant. Okay, we have mass, we have spring constant, so we can calculate the period 0 0.39 second. So, uh, uh, from 0 to 0 0.397 seconds, so that is the period. Okay, but remember the concepts of period, okay, let's say, is based on four motions. Okay, one, two. Two. Okay, but it's not one complete cycle yet. Yeah? Three, and then it goes back to this part. Four. So there are four processes in order, to, four steps in order to get a one complete oscillation. Four steps. That means if you start at this point, you need to learn, you need to end at this point again in order to complete one complete cycle. So that's why. If you want to find what is the time taken, so you divide the period into 4. And then the answer will be 0 0.0993 seconds. Because the question asks you, how long is the block in contact with the spring before it comes to rest? Okay. So these are another examples, but I cannot, I, I don't want to uh, emphasize on this part because it doesn't contain the value. But you can also look at these examples in order to understand, in order to, to know the concepts of harmony. Okay. Now let's look at the pendulum. Okay, the pendulum. Okay. A simple pendulum consists of mass M suspended by a string or rod of length L. Okay, remember, okay, a simple pendulum. Okay, what is the, uh, the one that you did eh, in your simple harmonic motions uh, experiment is the simple pendulum. Okay, where you must have mass and suspended by a string of length L. Okay, mass and suspended by a string of length L. So this is length L and this is mass. Okay. The angle it makes with the vertical varies with time as a sine or cosine. What does it mean? The angle it makes with the vertical varies with time. Here. This is the angle. Theta. Okay.
Okay, sorry for the disturbance. Okay, let me share the slide back. Okay, so we stop here at the pendulum, okay, where we have a simple pendulum, okay. Of course, there is some physical pendulum that eh? we learn afterwards, but this one is a pendulum, okay. To be on the precise, a simple pendulum. What is a simple pendulum? It consists of mass and suspended by a string of rod of length L. And of course, this length, uh, this uh, cord uh, or this... Uh, um, um, cable or whatsoever, maybe thread, okay, thread, okay, at least, okay, must have some rules, okay, must have some um, indications that this rod cannot, yeah, this mass, uh, this um, cable or this thread cannot have mass, okay, must be massless, okay, very light, okay, and because we, can, we cannot put because this is a simple pendulum. Okay, so mass and also just a suspended by a string. This string must be massless. Okay, tak boleh ada value. That's why kita gunakan benang. Okay, the angle it makes with the vertical varies with the time as a sign or cosine. Okay, to be on the safe side, okay, the pendulum, okay, uh, will reach to its um, some point where we can measure its potential energy. Okay, the potential energy of the pendulum. If we try to swing it until at one point, is given by mgh. Okay, mgh. So what is mgh? So we are saying that mg times with l minus l cos theta. Okay, because theta is here. We have theta, so this is L, okay? So, if you try to release it from the potential energy, then you can say that this is the original the, the, the original uh, mass, okay? The original mass before you pull up to that level. So, this one, okay, everything here is considered to be L, okay? But when you take this, this mass, okay, up to this level, so right now, we can minus it because right now we have a, a, a some um some what we call that as um component okay component of l cos theta and this one is the l minus l cos theta l minus l cos theta and then you can put it inside here so you can factorize l so we can become mgl1 cos theta okay mgl1 cos theta so uh, in our terms okay look at the picture on your right so this is l and at l we have tension so these are the tension and this one is mg straight downward mg okay and the theta getting here is the theta from this part okay which is this is where you get mg cos theta and this one is where you get the mg sine theta okay the same thing happens to your uh, in your um, tutorial okay the same the, the big one somewhere which is all the tutorial yeah mg cos theta at this point and mg sine theta at this point so, uh, F is equivalent to, F is equivalent to mg sine theta. What is F equivalent to mg sine theta? Because due to this part that the, the mass will go down. Okay, the mass will go down and it be, so we can create mg sine theta. But in order to achieve, uh, in order to achieve so that the sine theta here becomes really really small until it reach the value of sine theta it becomes theta okay until the sine theta becomes theta just theta okay because we have achieved the theta before this okay mg1 l cos theta okay for a small angle sine theta this one eh, 
which is very very small that's why in the experiment okay we have used a theta less than 10 degree because we want to make it that sine theta okay will be close enough to get until the value becomes theta okay for small angle sine theta it becomes theta so that we can uh, substitute the request the equation of f equals to mg sine theta okay but we want to make sure that the sine theta really really small until it reach the theta so that it becomes mg theta okay mg theta right but uh, if you try to the, the arc length okay the arc length here the arc length is based on the uh, what we have learned before this which means we have uh, displacement okay s equals to r theta okay s equals to in this case they want to find l okay as s equals to l because uh, r in here in this equation is considered to be radius okay so r normally is just x equals to r theta but in this case they want to find x so x equals to l theta x equals to l theta then theta is equivalent to x over l then you can put it here theta equivalent to x over l so that we can create whatever happens okay using f equals to kx okay so you can put it as f equals to kx all right so again f equals to kx so kx equivalent to take this thing mg x over l okay x over l and of course we can cancel out okay we can cancel out x and x what's left is just k equivalent to mg over l k equals to mg over l so using the period okay before this we have learned t equals to 2 pi square root of m over k so what is k right now k equals to mg over l so 2 pi m this one is mg over l okay you can deduct these things and l you bring to the upwards it becomes 2 pi l over g t equals to 2 pi l over g but the correct way is you need to know that the theta must be really really uh, the sine theta will be really really small until it can becomes theta okay sine theta must equals equivalent to theta in order to do that that's why we need to do some small angle very small angle so that we can make sure that the sine theta will be equivalent to theta okay so in the end we have reached the argument uh, to see that from t equals to 2 pi m over k from the spring constant right now using the pendulum okay, using the pendulum we can reach we can have 2 pi l over g so this one the period in terms of spring this one is in terms of length of string a length of strings and gravity okay so this also involve both situations also have simple harmonic motion this one is also simple harmonic motion so that's why we use uh, this concept at uh, this part uh, you know for you to to do a simple harmonic motions experiment uh, 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 virtually okay virtually so that's why Okay, using the length of pendulum. Okay, remember to do it that the theta must be really small. Okay, at least it must less than 10 degree, less than 10 degree. Because when you say sine 9, we want to find that the theta will be 9. Uh, okay, so that 
this can happen. Uh, we can use this t equals to two pi l over g and if you uh, attempt to uh, square the value it becomes t square equals to four pi square l over g this one t square equals to four pi square m over k Okay, so we are currently have two equations t for the pendulum t equals to 2 pi l over g and, and for the spring system t equals to 2 pi m over k and if you square both sides you can get this part okay you can get t equals to 4 pi square l over g and also t square equals to 4 pi square m over Okay. Right, so let's look at these examples. A pendulum is constructed from strings 0 0.6 to 7 meters long. Attach, okay, so this one is L, okay, to a mass. This one is mass, okay. When set in motion, the pendulum completes one, con one oscillation every 1.5 seconds. So this one is T. If the pendulum is held at rest and the string is cut, okay, held at rest, the string is cut, how long will it take for the mass to fall to a distance? One meters. Okay, the question now is from the uh, pendulum, okay, in which the pendulum completes one cycle, so it gives you some T, and if the pendulum is held at rest and the string is cut, then you cut the string, and how long will it take for the mass to fall? You need to know T. Okay, T. All right. So again, we have T equals to 2 pi L over G, square root of L over G. Then you need to find what is G. Okay, from here, the G is given by 4 pi square. The L is 0 0.627 meters here. <coughs> And the period will be 1.59 seconds square. Don't forget to square. And the value of G is 9.79 meter per second square. So in this case, okay, we cannot use uh, G equals to 9.8 straight away. At least we need to uh, do some uh, a small calculation or side calculation to find what is the G on this example alone. Okay, you need to calculate on your own G. Okay, that's why we are using the same G, okay, which also uh, uh, the same as our G, 9.8, eh? slightly different, just a, a 0 0.1, 0 0.01, eh? different from the real value. So you can use the kinematics equation, so Y equals to half G T squared, coming from this equation, Y equals to Y naught plus V naught T uh, plus half a t squared plus half a t squared okay and so this one zero this one zero okay you just left with y equals to half g t squared okay half g t squared without the negative it doesn't matter if you put the negative then you just put the negative okay but uh, they the one to find what is t okay what is t so the answer is 0 0.45 Two seconds, zero point four five two seconds. Okay, all right. Before this, okay, a simple pendulum. T equals to two pi, the square root of L over G. Okay, so right now we have a physical pendulum, physical pendulum. So what is physical pendulum? Yes, using some sort like not a string, not a massless string, not a massless thread, but yeah, using a thing that have a center of mass. For example, we are using ruler, we are using bones, okay, we are using other subjects uh, to oscillate. Uh, the thing is, this, this, uh, uh, the, that, whatever you are using, let's say ruler or or, or bones, 
uh, it contain mass. Okay, so it cannot be a simple pendulum. Okay, so that's why we call it as a physical pendulum. Okay, if the body, uh, if we are using uh, things to to hang uh, the, the the mass using bones or ruler, and not not thread as usual. Okay, so this one is called physical pendulum. Yes, it's also a pendulum because it, uh, we can uh, get a period, but it's not a simple pendulum. Simple pendulum, L over G. The factor that affected the period will be length and also gravity. But on this physical pendulum, okay, what factor will, it, will affect uh, the period? The answer is this one. Okay, in this case, it can be shown that the period depends on the moment of inertia. We have learned about the moment of inertia, but... This one is for your understanding only. Okay, we uh, didn't use uh, this equation much in the final exam because it's just for your own thoughts that there are some physical pendulum. But be prepared, maybe they can they can ask you okay, during the objective question. Maybe they can ask you okay, about the pendulum. So, but please, please be, 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 uh, be noted and please uh, revise that Okay, the pendulum is contributed by a simple and also physical pendulum. Okay, now we what we have learned before this is t equals to 2 pi l over g is the simple pendulum using a massless, okay, tanpa mass, eh, massless thread, benang. Kita gunakan string, tali yang tidak ada mass. Almost zero mass. Not, not, not really zero, it contain mass, but sangat kecil value dia. So that is a simple pendulum. But physical pendulum, they gunakan physical benda untuk gantung. <coughs> gantung mass tu. Okay. For example, they gunakan object, they gunakan tulang bones. Okay. Untuk menggantung. Untuk buat, untuk cari uh, ni boleh ke tak boleh? Yes, boleh. Tapi dengan equation yang lebih complicated seperti ni. Much more, much more complicated than the one that a simple pendulum. But for your level, at Asasi level, okay, you need to know the pendulum, simple pendulum in terms of 2 pi equivalent to L over G. But, okay, uh, you, at least you need to know that there is also physical pendulum. Okay, it's a solid mass that oscillates around its center of mass, but cannot be modeled as a point mass suspended by massless string. Okay, so I think uh, these are the uh, summary. Okay, we have learned about period, frequency, angular frequency. Remember, okay, before this, we have note uh, we have learned about angular uh, velocity or angular speed. Okay, in this chapter, okay, we have learned angular frequency because, because it contains frequency. Okay, so the simple harmonic motion where we can actually get some uh, the displacement, the velocity, and acceleration, the period of mass on the spring, the total energy in the simple harmonic motions, okay, the potential energy as a function of time, the kinetic energy as a function of time. At least you need to know, okay. Uh, as a function of time, a simple pendulum with a small amplitude as a bit simple harmonic motion, which is t equals to 2 pi l over g, and also a period of physical pendulum. Okay. Okay, so that will be the end. Um, you have any questions? Ada soalan tak? Are there?